Okay, so if you're paying any attention at all in talk about artificial intelligence, it feels like almost every single day there's some huge new breakthrough announced or, you know, the opposite, another scary warning about how it's going to take all our jobs or worse. It's just it's a lot of noise and it makes it really tough, I think, for you to figure out what's actually happening versus what's just, you know, clever marketing. So mm -hmm. our mission today, digging into this stack of sources you've given us, is really to try and cut through all that static. We want to get to the heart of this big question. Are we really standing on the edge of some immediate AI revolution that changes everything? Or is the reality maybe a bit slower, more friction, maybe even, well, strategic hype? Yeah, it's fascinating, isn't it, how completely polarized the whole conversation is. You basically see these two extremes constantly push. On one hand, AI is this perfect utopian problem solver. It'll cure cancer and work as we know it. And on the other hand... It's the doom scenario. Job killer, existential threat, Skynet, basically. Exactly. Yeah. But the sources we looked at, they paint a much more uh, nuanced picture. AI's future isn't just one or the other. It's not instant transformation, but it's also not necessarily immediate doom. It's complex. It's conditional. And right now, honestly, it's defined as much by what it can't do as by what it can. We really need to get away from those big dramatic stories and look at the actual tech. Okay, and to do that, the sources keep coming back to this really fundamental distinction, don't they? We've got to separate the kind of AI we see now, this incredibly fast optimization, the statistical learning, the stuff that feels like magic. Separate that from the idea of, you know, true general intelligence, Con consciousness. Precisely. That difference, understanding the gap between a really, really sophisticated calculator and an actual thinking entity, that's the key. It's everything from managing expectations and understanding where we truly are scientifically. All right, let's unpack that reality check then. Let's look under the hood, so to speak. The core argument seems to be current AI. Yeah, it's powerful, incredibly so. But its scope is fundamentally overestimated. A lot of what gets branded as revolutionary is actually, well, it's more incremental, isn't it? Optimization, not transformation. That's spot on. We've made huge strides, no question. Mainly because we have these enormous data sets now and just unbelievable computing power. But even with all that, current AI is still mostly stuck in what we call narrow tasks. It needs well-defined rules. Like what specifically? Well, it's brilliant at recognizing patterns in images or generating text that sounds human or running complex financial predictions, things where the data provides clear patterns to follow. Okay, but then you have these large language models, right? Like the GPTs, they write essays, code, poetry, <laughs> stuff that seems incredibly human-like. So isn't saying AI is just narrow, maybe a bit too simple, how do the sources explain that? Because they are useful. That's a really important point, and it gets right to the core limitation. These systems mimic intelligence by predicting patterns. Think of it like, mm. like the world's most advanced statistical parrot. It learns the structure of language, the probabilities of words following each other perfectly. But it lacks what scientists sometimes call symbol grounding. Symbol grounding, meaning? Meaning it doesn't actually understand the concepts behind the words. It knows statistically that after the cat sat on the word, the word mat is highly probable. But it doesn't have a concept of a cat or a mat or sitting. There's no internal world model. It's just predicting the next token based on the data it was trained on. Ah, okay. So it's optimizing algorithms based on data, not becoming sentient. Exactly. And that gap, the absence of genuine comprehension, is the massive wall between current AI and what people imagine as artificial general intelligence or AGI. That's a critical distinction and oh, maybe why the public gets confused because the marketing blurs that line. The sources gave some really good concrete examples of where this narrow AI stumbles in the real world. Let's talk about autonomous vehicles. They seem so smart, but they still struggle, right? They do, precisely because the real world isn't a clean data set. It's messy. AVs can do pretty well on, say, a clear highway with predictable traffic, but throw in heavy snow, unexpected road debris, a really complex city intersection with unpredictable pedestrians. Yeah. Anything truly novel that wasn't explicitly in its training data, that's where they falter. They lack human-like judgment for unforeseen circumstances. Right, you need that flexibility. And you see similar things in healthcare AI too. Mm, absolutely. AI might be fantastic at screening thousands of mammograms for known signs of cancer if the images are high quality and the patterns are ones it's seen before but put it in a real clinical setting with messy data or ask it to diagnose a rare condition it wasn't trained on or synthesize conflicting patient information, it often falls short. It doesn't have that doctor's intuition or broad clinical judgment. Okay, so that brings us to the timeline discussion in the sources. 
these huge leaps everyone seems to expect, like AI having genuine moral reasoning or emotional understanding or making complex ethical choices on its own. Yeah, those are still very much in the realm of science fiction, according to the material. True AGI isn't just around the corner. We're likely talking years, probably decades, assuming we can even overcome the massive scientific and ethical hurdles that stand in the way. It's a distant vision, not an immediate reality. So putting it all together, if the tech itself is powerful but fundamentally limited in this narrow way, then this whole narrative of an instant AI revolution changing everything overnight, it starts to look more like, well, a marketing push, maybe fueled by venture capital excitement and these hype cycles. It certainly has elements of that. Transformation will happen, absolutely. But the sources suggest it's going to be slower, probably play out more on an enterprise level first, and involve a lot more friction and integration challenges than the headlines imply. More evolution than revolution, perhaps. That's a good way to put it, yes. Okay, so we've talked about the technical limits, what AI fundamentally can't do right now. But what about the things holding back even the current capabilities from being deployed effectively and fairly? It seems like these non-technical roadblocks, things like governance, transparency, ethics, are just as big a deal, if not bigger. Oh, arguably bigger in some ways. Because these issues hit directly at trust, fairness, and the social contract. Understanding these is vital for you, whether you're a citizen interacting with AI or a leader trying to implement it. So what are the main ones the sources highlight? Well, first and maybe most fundamentally, there's data bias. This keeps coming up. <laughs> AI systems learn from data created by humans. And unfortunately, human data reflects human biases, historical inequities, prejudices. It's all baked in. So garbage in, garbage out, basically. Essentially, yes. If your training data underrepresents certain groups or reflects discriminatory patterns in things like historical loan applications or hiring decisions, the AI will learn and replicate those biases sometimes even amplify them. Which creates immediate fairness problems, right? Mm -hmm. If the AI denies loans or filters resumes based on bias data, how do we even begin to fix that? It's incredibly difficult. And it leads right into the second major challenge, the explainability gap, or the black box problem, as it's often called. Most of these really advanced AI models, especially the big complex ones, are opaque. You put data in, you get an output, maybe your loan is denied, or a medical diagnosis is suggested, but it's extremely hard, sometimes impossible, to see the step-by-step -step reasoning why the AI reached that conclusion. Wait, so you can't interrogate the decision. If I'm a regulator, or just someone affected by the AI's choice, I need to know the why. How can we have accountability without that? You can't, really. That's the core problem. This lack of transparency makes oversight and accountability incredibly difficult. Mm -hmm. It's a major hurdle for deployment, especially in sensitive areas like finance, healthcare, or justice. Is there work being done on that to make them less black boxy? Yes, absolutely. There's a whole field called XAI, explainable AI, dedicated to developing techniques to make AI decision-making more transparent. But it's complex and we're not entirely there yet. It's a critical bottleneck. Okay, so we have biased data and black boxes. What else? Then there's the sheer ethical and legal ambiguity. Technology is just moving so much faster than our laws and regulations. We have this situation where incredibly powerful tools are being deployed globally, but the rules of the road, who's liable if an AI makes a mistake, what constitutes ethical use, how do we handle data privacy across borders, are still being figured out. So a bit of Wild West. Everyone agrees we need rules, but nobody can agree on the rules themselves. Pretty much. And then there are the more physical, structural issues, like resource inequality. You mean who has the computing power? That, but also who controls the data. Building and training these cutting-edge AI models requires immense computational resources and access to vast, often proprietary data sets. Right now, that power is concentrated in the hands of a few giant tech companies and a handful of wealthy nations. This risks deepening the digital divide, leaving smaller players and developing countries further behind. That's a huge concentration of power. It is. And okay. finally, something often overlooked, the environmental cost. Training these massive foundational models uses staggering amounts of electricity and generates significant carbon emissions. There's a real environmental footprint to this AI race that needs to be considered. Wow. So bias, black boxes, legal limbo, inequality, and environmental impact. That's quite a list of hurdles. It is. And it helps explain why progress feels uneven. And this connects back to that hype bubble idea the sources mentioned, right? Expectations shoot up, driven by investment maybe, but then reality hits when these roadblocks slow things down. You see companies stuck in pilot projects not getting the results they were promised. Exactly. That disillusionment phase is common with new tech. 
There was that great example in the readings about the plasma physics researcher. Oh, yeah. Tell me about that again. So they tried using AI to model these incredible complex dynamic plasma behaviors in fusion research. Mm -hmm. The AI was amazing, like 99% accurate at identifying plasma states it had already seen in its training data. Okay. Sounds good so far. But the moment a truly new, unexpected plasma condition emerged, something fundamentally different, the AI completely failed. It could only recognize patterns it knew. It couldn't reason about the underlying physics or adapt to novelty. So it lacked basic physical understanding. It could classify, not infer. Precisely. It shows that gap between recognizing known patterns, however complex, and genuine understanding or reasoning. Mm. The lab promise versus operational reality can be vast. Okay. That plasma physics example really drives the point home. So if AI isn't about to replace us all tomorrow and the road is bumpy, let's shift focus. Let's move away from the fear or the hype disappointment. What's the more constructive, realistic path forward that the sources suggest? What's the emerging vision? The vision that's gaining traction and frankly seems much more grounded is augmented intelligence. Not artificial, but augmented. The idea here is to design systems specifically to assist humans not replace them, to amplify our capabilities. So AI handles the heavy lifting, the pattern spotting, the data crunching. Exactly. It takes over the repetitive tasks, the analysis of massive data sets that would overwhelm a human, finding correlations we might miss. This frees up humans to focus on what we do best. Judgment, creativity, strategic thinking, ethical considerations, empathy. Amplification, not substitution. I like that framing. It's about partnership. The machine provides speed and scale. The human provides context, wisdom, and direction. Okay, but given all those roadblocks we just discussed, the bias, the black box problem, how do we make sure this human-machine partnership is actually successful? And more importantly, responsible? That's the critical question. Yeah. And the sources are clear. Responsible integration isn't just a tech problem. It requires a whole ecosystem approach. It needs several things working together. First, strong regulation and governance frameworks that can adapt quickly to the tech. We yeah. can't have laws lagging years behind. Okay, clear rules of the road. What else? Transparency and interoperability are key. We need ways to understand how AI systems make decisions, cracking open that black box and ensure different systems can work together safely. So explainability needs to become standard, not optional. Ideally, yes. Then there's the need for rigorous interdisciplinary oversight. This can't just be left to the engineers and computer scientists. We need ethicists, sociologists, legal experts, domain specialists involved in development and deployment. Bringing in diverse perspectives to catch potential problems early makes sense. And finally, maybe the most crucial piece, public literacy. People, citizens, employees, consumers need a basic understanding of how AI works, what its limits are, and where it's being used. Why is that so important? Because without that baseline understanding, the public can't participate meaningfully in the conversation. They can't demand accountability or push for responsible practices. Informed citizens are essential for democratic oversight of powerful technologies. That sounds like a really complex long-term effort, coordinating governments, industries, educators. It absolutely is. There are no easy answers here. Right. But it's necessary if we want to harness AI's potential benefits without falling victim to its risks. So pulling it all together for this section, the realistic path forward is this augmented intelligence model. Yes. Machines amplifying human capabilities. Yes. And it's a big, but this must happen within a framework of strong governance, real transparency, and clear lines of accountability. It's not about waiting for AGI. It's about building a better human-machine collaboration now. Hashtag tag outro. Okay, let's try and wrap this up. Our deep dive today, looking through all this material, really paints a clear picture, I think. AI right now immensely powerful, its future potential, genuinely staggering. But the current reality, progress is uneven and the hype often outruns the actual capabilities significantly. We're dealing with incredibly sophisticated optimization, not conscious machines. That sums it up well. And the real shift, the true revolution, if you want to call it that, won't be when AI replaces humans. It will begin when we as societies learn how to integrate these powerful tools ethically, intelligently, and responsibly into our lives, our economies, our institutions. That integration piece is key. It is. And that leads us with a final thought, really a question for you, the listener, to mull over based on everything we've discussed. If current AI is primarily an amplifier speeding up and scaling up human decisions and actions, what biases or assumptions might you be inadvertently amplifying in your own work or within your organization through the tools you use? And when that amplification causes harm, who ultimately bears the responsibility?
That's definitely something to chew on. A powerful question about accountability in this augmented future. Thank you for diving deep with us today, cutting through the AI noise to get to a more grounded reality. We'll catch you on the next one.